Hello, today I am going to discuss about nasal polyps. First, coming to definition of nasal polyps, they are defined as hypertrophic edematous perunculated mucosa prolapsing out of the nose or paranasal sinuses. They can be classified into entrocanal polyp, which is a single entity, and ethmoidal polyps, which are multiple entities, so called ethmoidal polyps. What are the properties of nasal polyps? They are pale or grey in color, they are glistening having a smooth surface, they are pedunculated, mobile, insensitive to touch, and do not bleed on probing. Coming to entrocanal polyp or so called Killian's polyp, the etiology of Killian's polyp is infection because it is commonly found in the maxillary sinus, so entrocanal polyp. So arises from the maxillary entrum, goes to the coina. Proto's theory is described as faulty development of the maxillary sinus osteum, the nodus phenomena, which describes as pressure drop next to construction. Therefore, when there is pressure drop next to the entry nasal valve, the mucosa can be sucked out from the maxillary sinus and might form as the polyp, entrocanal polyp. The origin of the entrocanal polyp is it arises from the maxillary sinus mucosa, so from the maxillary entrum, and exists by its natural or accessory osteum and extends to the now, commonly it arises, it uh, comes out through the exterior osteum. Why does the entrocanal polyp prefer to extend towards the coina? So, entrocanal because the name itself signifies first is the maxillary osteum is directed posteriorly, this is the most common uh, property. The cilia also bit posteriorly, the air current flows posteriorly in a greater force during inspiration. The nasal floor slopes posteriorly because it is more sloping posteriorly. The posterior nasal cavity is high, larger, and negative oropharyngeal pressure while swallowing. This all lead to the intracranial polyp extending towards the coina. What are the parts of intracranial polyp? The parts are enteral, is the globular, globular part, okay? then quanal, which is the also globular part, and the nasal part is flattened transversely. The neck is present at maxillary osteum. Okay, this is the quanal part, this is the nasal part, and this is the enteral part, and this is the neck. So, entro quanal polyp. The nasal part is small. Clinical presentation of entrocanal polyp. They are commonly found in children and adolescent age. They are unilateral uh, conditions leading to unilateral nasal obstruction. And there might be unilateral nasal discharge. Occasionally, nasal mass can be seen on intranoscopy, but as you as we have already told, the nasal mass is small, so quanal part is bigger. So usually it is not visualized, but sometimes we can we can visualize. So the mass bulging in the coina or oropharynx, which is seen on postranoscopy or simply examination of the oral cavity, is the important finding. So this is the mass intracranial polyp. This is going towards the Oropharynx. So, this is the oropharynx, and you can see the mass hanging from the nasal pharynx to the oropharynx. And this is the mass which is visualized on the nasal cavity in the nasal cavity. How to examine the nasal mass? So, you have to inspect the side, size, number, color, surface, pedunculate or sessile origin if we can see an attachment, if we can visualize. Proving is important to find out the consistency of the mass, sensitivity to torch, bleeding on torch. Or if the probe can be passed all around or not. So sometimes you have to see if the mass shrinks with decongestant nasal drops. When the mass is vascular, then that might shrink with decongestant nasal drops. Probe test for endocranial polyp. The polyp is insensitive to pain. So the, the, as there is there are no knob endings, the polyps are painless. The hypertrophy terminates, it is uh, painful painful on torch, okay, when you pay torch, it will be painful because there are no supply. Proof can be passed all around, intracranial polyp, it has a peduncle, so apertrophy terminate doesn't have peduncle, so it cannot be passed around. So, intracranial polyp is mobile due to peduncle, it is a peduncle structure again, and the apertrophy terminate is not mobile. You can simply identify from there. What are the differential diagnosis of unilateral nasal mass? They are hypertrophic intracranial terminate, blob of mucus, sometimes a uh, simple blow of mucus also can be seen in children. Inverted papilloma, basically in elderly populations, rhinosporidiosis or rhinoscleroma in young adults also when they have habit of uh, swimming in the pond, angiofibroma, especially in young male, young uh, male child, adolescent male, meningocele in children, and malignancy in adults or might be in uh, adolescents also. Okay. 
So meningosal is usually congenital condition which uh, has to be differentiated from in intraplanar polyp. What are the investigations carried out for intraplanar polyp? They are diagnosed in the endoscopy. You can find out the mass. You can see the mass. Then plain X-ray of the PNS, nose and PNS. Uh, what is view? This is the uh, commonly performed uh, investigation, but usually nowadays we do CT scan. Sometimes do an X-ray nasopharynx lateral view to see uh, to differentiate from endocranial polyp and from the NGF hyoderma. But presence of air between the skull and polyp okay, that uh, signifies the mass is endocranial polyp only. It is not arising from the nasopharynx. Suppose when the mass is arising from nasopharynx, then there might be no air space. CT so scan of nose and penis is the gold standard. Coronary and axial cords are gold standard treatment, gold standard investigation for intracranial polyp or any nasal mass. So CT scan of nose and PNS, coronal and axial cords are more they are most important diagnostic tools. This is a diagnostic endoscope. You can see the this is the endoscope which has been passed to the nose and this can show the mass. This is the nasal mass, this is the inferior termit, this is the septum, so this is the mass. So it is important it can be visualized with the help of the endoscope. Then X ray, nose and pianal sinuses uh, can it can show the mass in the maxillary interim, which is the the convex upwards mass in the maxillary interim. Okay, this is the uh, maxillary edema. So this signifies there is some form of nasal mass. And CT scan is gold standard as well. You can you can show all the anatomy very clearly. Okay, this is the ostium, this is the sign, this is the polyp in the maxillary sinus, this is the polyp coming to nose and placing in the entry aspect. So this is the intro nasal polyp okay so treatment is by antibiotics because you know the infection is one of the causative factor for intracranial polyp so pre and post operative antibiotic are to be given evolution polyvectomy with middle mat androstomy was uh, usually performed sometimes you can also perform this but face is the surgery of choice to perform nowadays this face is transfer functional endoscopic sinus surgery Calidox or operation for recurrence of polyps but nowadays face is the again Treatment of choice for intracranial polyps. This is the middle vent androstomy. You can see the middle vent has been opened in this case. And calvulox surgery. This is the standard procedure making a hole okay, in the interior wall of the maxillary sinus. So, and this is the, the teeth, and this is the maxilla, pre maxilla. The opening has been made here, and the mass or any lesion from the maxillary sinus will be removed. How to prevent recurrence of intracranial polyp? This is a complete removal of the all parts, both nasal, enteral, as well as coronal parts are important, otherwise the polyp might again recur when there is remnant. This should be wide middle matter androstomy, widening of the maxillary sinus ostium has to be made uh, big so that there will be proper ventilation of the maxillary sinus. So post-operative antibiotics are to be given to, re to avoid the recurrence. Then ethmoid polyps, uh, clinical presentation usually happens in adult patient, occurs in adult patient with bilateral nasal obstruction, bilateral water nasal discharge, excessive paroxysmal sneezing and history previous nasal surgery. The important thing is because as you know the ethmoid polyps are recurrent, so there might be history of previous surgery or excessive paroxysmal sneezing because the nasal polyps, basically ethmoid polyps are associated with uh, allergy also. So patient might have allergy nasal discharge okay, or history of previous nasal surgery. What is the etiology of ethmoid polyps? Ethmoid polyp etiology is, different, uh, is different from intracranial polyp. So the ethmoid polyp might be due to allergy, infection, vasomotor imbalance, burnout phenomena and polysaccharide changes. All might be the etiology for ethmoid polyps. There are some auxiliary diseases like Samtras triad which signifies aspirin intolerance Brinkle asthma and ethmoid polyps, cystic fibrosis, basically there is problem with the cilia, then allergic fungal sinusitis, cartilaginous syndrome, so called as ciliary dyskinesia. It is condition characterized by situs inverses, chronic sinusitis, and bronchiectasis. Basically, it's a problem with the ciliary uh, function. And the urine syndrome, also called hyperviscous mucus, again it's due to ciliary problem itself, leads to bronchiectasis, chronic rhinosinusitis, and infertility. Uh, so these conditions might be associated with the 
ethmoidal polyp ethmoidal polyps. Sixty five species is common in children. Investigations are diagnosed in endoscopy as a rate X ray PNS, reach lateral big view for the ethmoids. Cities can have more than PNS coronal cords and test for allergy because patient might be having allergic conditions as well. So DNA, this diagnosed in endoscopy which shows the mass, okay, which is both medial and lateral to the middle turbinate. So medial to middle turbinate and lateral to middle turbinate. So, so mass is on both the side, both the ethmoids. In CT scan of PNS is again a gold standard procedure which shows the mass in the ethmoid and in the nasal cavity as well over here. So how to treat non-surgical treatment, so-called medical polypectomy is important. Basically, ethmoid polyps are early to they are due to allergic etiology. So for small polyps, we can do we can avoid the allergens. We can provide simple oral antihistamines for one to three months, corticosteroid is space for three to six months longer time, and oral prednisone for one mg per kg per day for two weeks, or we can give for one month in uh, tapering doses. The pre steroid versus post steroid, you can see the steroids they help to reduce the size of the mass. This is the big mass, this is the smaller mass. The mass has been reduced, and there is at least nasal pregnancy becomes there. What is surgical treatment? Is intranasal avulsion polypectomy, different stages, extranasal external ethmoidectomy, trans enteral ethmoidectomy. All are historical uh, interest for historical interest only, but the Treatment which is performed nowadays is functional endoscopic sinus surgery. It might be conventional or used by use a micro or used by the laser surgery along with laser. So this is the gold standard procedure, is the most commonly performed procedure for the nasal polyps nowadays, both ethmoidal as well as endocrinal polyps. In basic principles in ethmoid endoscopic uh, sinus surgery, we, with the use of Help of endoscopy can visualize the mass in the ethmoid sinus or in the maxillary sinus or front and uh, sphenoid. Then we can remove the mass with the help of endoscope on direct vision. The instruments of face are different instruments. So you need not know all the instruments that yes, you can see different instruments for endoscopic sinus surgery. This is a micro debrider, which is used for using during endoscopic sinus surgery to debride the Polyp. So this is the micro debrider head, okay, which helps to uh, debride the polyp. How to prevent recurrence in ethmoidal polyps? As I already told, ethmoidal polyps are more, uh, they have more chance of recurrence than the endocrinal polyps. So you have to completely remove, completely remove, remove the all parts of all of the polyps because as you know there are multiple polyps, so you have to should be able to reduce the remove the all parts of all polyps. We have to avoid allergens if possible. Because when the patient develops allergy, then uh, there will be again recurrence of polyps. Post-operative course of oral antihistamines for one to three months or corticosteroid in the space for three to six months can have to be used. And patient should be educated. They have to be told about nasal dressing. So nasal cleaning is to be done time by time. And basically, the function of nasal dressing is to remove the secretions also and to avoid hydration in the nose. This is the bilateral face cavities after surgery. This is the middle ventral endostomy, which is quite well with the ethmoid. Okay, this is the usual well uh, healed hmm, face cavity. And post PCT scan, you can see this is the maxillary sinus, which is uh, clear. And this is the sinus ostium, which is also clear. And the ethmoids and the frontal cells have been removed. So, this is the post operative CT scan. Now, coming to uh, next topic. Differences between endocrinal and the ethmoid polyps. This is uh, last topic for to last uh, slide for today. Endocrinal polyps. The age is in children and adolescents. They happen in children and adolescents. And ethmoid polyps. They happen in adults. Etiology is infection in endocrinal polyp and allergy in ethmoid polyps. The numbers are single in the endocrinal polyp. Is a single arising from a single uh, maxillary sinus and ethmoid polyps arise from the multiple intraethmoidal air cells and postethmoidal air cells, so they are multiple in uh, numbers. The endocrine polyp is in lateral condition and ethmoidal polyp is usually bilateral condition. The endocrine polyp is trilobed, having a dome cell, having enteral, nasal and the panel part and the ethmoidal polyp has, is a grape-like structure which just comes from the ethmoids. Then endocrine polyp grows backwards already told and ethmoidal polyp comes forwards. 
and treat me with surgical for intracranial polyp and medical and surgical for ethmoid polyps. A recurrence of intracranial polyp is usually uncommon, but recurrence of ethmoid polyp is common. Thank you so much. Please have a look on the slides before coming to class. Thank you.